Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is one Jojo Magoo, and he went to Labor Fest in Milwaukee. <laughs> and they let Jojo Magoo loose, and it's a disaster. Like, I don't know if they're going to try to, you know, they're making fun of him now on Saturday Night Live. Uh, I don't know if they're tr going to try to get rid of this guy. But, you know, it's a 35-minute long mess. I'm just going to show you bits of it, but like, you know, all of it's pretty messed up. But this is kind of one of the um, the highlights here. A couple of memes, three or four memes. Plus, he does another uh, meme about his, you know, he lied again about his other son, um, which we'll get into that. Nancy Pelosi going off uh, a while back has resurfaced a um, bunch of stuff here, some celebrity stuff. Um, but let's start here. We capped at 30 $5. And by the way, there's a reason for that. You know how much it costs them to make and package the insulin for diabetes? Ten bucks. Ten bucks. You know, he's just walking around. Whenever he walks around and turns his back on the audience and the camera, and there might not be anybody in front of him. Like, I'd like to see the camera spin around. This could be all of it. This could be the whole thing here. Ten. Any of you have to, you need that insulin, or your children need it, you know what it costs. It costs you somewhere between 650 and 1,000 bucks a month. It's outrageous. Well, guess what? We also had in this bill of mine, we also had a provision that affected people who weren't on Medicare. But because of the leadership of your senior senator and others, it got defeated. But I'm coming back and getting it. He's coming back and getting it. Uh, that's number one. <laughs> Beam. Woo! 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 Look at this. This kid here is clapping right here on his shoulder. Like he can't even put an effort to put his hands together. Like he's clapping right here. Clap your shoulder, buddy. <laughs> it looks like a fake crowd. Like they handpicked people like actors. Imagine. Think about this. Imagine being a mom or a dad. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Imagine being a mom or dad with a kid with type 2 diabetes, knowing you need that insulin, and you don't have the insurance. You can't pay for it. I'm not joking. It sounds like you're joking. I mean, it sounds like you're joking. It sounds like you're kind of joking there, Joe. Are you, are you joking or not? Think about it. Think about how it would rip your heart out. Think about how it would rip your heart out. <laughs> Look at his tiny little hands. He's got little tiny little hands here. It's wrong. It's simply wrong. And we're going to end it. It costs 10 bucks and you can make 35 if you want. That's it. That's it. It's wrong. Let's watch that again. That was great. I don't have the insurance. You can't pay for it. I'm not joking. Think about it. Think about how it would rip your heart out. It's wrong. It's simply wrong. And we're going to end it. It costs 10 bucks and you can make 35 if you want. That's it. You're talking tough to the pharmaceutical industry that owned your presidency, right? <laughs> You're the guy that's going to you're the sheriff that's going to tame the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> but when he paces around angry like this. For decades, the biggest corporations, and by the way, I know corporations. I come from the corporate state of the world. He comes from, the cor he comes from a corporate state in the world. More corporations are incorporated in Delaware than... Every other nation, every other state in the country combined. Every other nation, state in the country, the province, the state, country, nation, county in the world. Okay, so I can write a doctorate on corporations. Just like your wife's doctorate that's like <laughs> like a child wrote it. You ever hear her, um, her doctorate that she got her doctor's, uh, her, she got her PhD in... Uh, education. It's like a child wrote it. So it's not like I'm anti-corporation generically, 
but I do think everybody should pay their fair share. Yeah, you pay your fair share. Woo! By the way, and by the way, look, for decades, the biggest corporations, the wealthiest Americans, have fought to block a fair tax code. Republicans passed a $2 trillion tax cut, mainly benefiting the wealthiest corporations under the Trump administration. Put us, by the boo, way, boo, boo, boo. Increase the debt by $2 trillion. Well, guess what? In 2000, 55 of those corporations earned a $40 billion in profit. They didn't pay a single solitary penny in taxes. Boo. Boo, corporations. Boo, Delaware. Boo. And wealthiest Americans of those 700 plus billionaires in America, you know what their average tax rate is, federal tax? 8%. No way. Boo. They pay more taxes than any one of you, less fewer taxes than any one of you pay. They pay more taxes than any one of you pay, more or less taxes. It's not right. No, no. It, I mean, this is, it, I, it, it's just outrageous. Well, guess what? Chicken butt. Guess what? I wasn't able to take care anyway. <laughs> what was that? That's another great thing there. Where he just says anyway, like he doesn't complete his statement. Well, guess what? Guess what? I wasn't able to take care anyway. If you're a cop, a teacher, firefighter, steel worker, a miner, you can pay double that federal tax. It's just wrong. But this year, the American people won. Now big corporations have to pay at least a minimum tax of 15%, at least. Yeah, that's going to be great. <laughs> that's going to bring the corporates, that's going to bring corporations back to America and Delaware. The days of billion dollar companies paying zero, they are over in America. They're over. Because I'm going to be president forever. I mean, look at how spry I am. And they know they can afford it. Yeah, they, they, get, they like to give their money away. They want to give their money away. They've been wanting to pay taxes. Trump wouldn't let them. And while we're doing this, we're actually reducing the federal deficit. You know how they talk about responsible debt? They, the last guy left me with a giant deficit. He did. The last guy left you with a giant deficit. Not the last, your guy. It was up to twenty-eight trillion, I believe, under uh, Obama or whatever. Twenty—I don't know what it was, right? And so, yeah, the deficit increased under Trump, but it was already in the twenty, the high twenties, and now it's in the thirties because it's increased three trillion dollars under you, and you're not even including your bailouts, right? Like it's a mess. This guy's trying to claim that he's fiscally responsible. Well, guess what? My first year, I reduced the deficit by $350 billion. Whoa. You know, how much, you know how much I'm reducing the deficit this year? $1,500,000 reduction in the deficit. $1,500,000? You mean $1,500,000,000? Like, that's not how numbers work. $1,027,000,000, right? <laughs> And he completely whiffed on the word deficit. He went to deficit. You know how much? You know how much I'm reducing with the deficit this year? One trillion five hundred thousand reduction in the deficit. And by the way, just by dealing with allowing Medicare to negotiate drug prices, it means Medicare doesn't have to pay out that many tax dollars to buy them. That alone is reduced, going to increase over time $300 billion in the deficit. He's saving money everywhere. The fact that the federal deficit, here's the national debt clock. I think it was at 28 or 29 under Trump, probably 26 or 25 under Obama, and it's up to $31 trillion. And so he's, you know, they're going to get around $5 um, trillion in tax revenues, which is more than whatever. But that's just going to bankrupt people, right? I mean, they're taking money from not the ultra-wealthy, but the, the upper middle class. But here's U.S. total debt is $92 trillion. 
and all this stuff. I show this all the time, right? Thirty-four trillion, and and these are unpaid, unfunded liabilities. These are things that aren't accounted for in the budget. Twenty-two trillion dollars in Social Security. There's not enough money. They can't pay this out, right? Social Security is done. You're not going to get any, unless you're really old right now. But people my age and younger, you're, it's going to be done. There's going to be no payouts. That's done. Medicaid's done, right? And so um, there's just nothing here. There's the household assets. They could try to take some of that from people. Here's a derivatives market here, $600 trillion in debt, you know, and, and debt being traded back and forth. There's just no money, right? And Jojo Magoo is a disaster with his bailouts. They've, he's been just looting the country. So just to have a sense of it, Obama... Um, the national debt, what he inherited, was um, $10 trillion. And when he left office in 2016, it was $9 trillion more. Then when Trump left office in 2020, it was 7 almost $8 trillion more. And so Jojo Magoo has already added three, but they're not counting the bailouts, right? Because the bailouts were $12 trillion. And that's going to be factored in later on. And so, you know, <laughs> it's all of them, right? It's every president adds a significant amount because it doesn't matter what the president does. Our income, the tax revenue, is less than the amount of money we're spending. We're spending more money. This is the case for anybody, right? Your personal finances. If your income is less than your expenses, and your, your expenses include an ever-growing amount of interest that is is growing exponentially because of the amount of debt, right? $30 trillion worth of debt and all the interest that's being accrued, and your finances, your the things you need to spend money on. So we have a $5 trillion uh, amount of re income or resources. I've showed you this before. And our budget's like seven, eight, nine trillion dollars, whatever it is. And there's the interest that's accruing. And so it's something that's insolvent. We'll never be able to pay this debt off. So I want to add this about Trump. Are you Trumpers? There's still people who are Republicans. And you think the Democrats are so much worse. Trump added eight trillion dollars to the national debt. Now, Obama added nine in uh, two terms, and Trump added eight in one term. You don't think Trump got any of that money, Jared Kushner and them? You don't think Trump and them looted any of that money, right? You think he just was completely benevolent? He was giving away to his banker buddies. You don't think he got any kickbacks? I mean, Trump's always been a scammer. Trump's always been a, a money, you know, first guy. He treated his vendors like crap. I know this from you know, people who were, you know, one degree away from personal experience, some barber, Republican barber in, uh, in Vegas who watched Fox News and he was, you know, voting for Trump. And he told me that all the vendors that he knew that dealt with Trump Towers reported it sucked dealing with that organization. They got screwed all the time and they had a horrible reputation around town. And Trump was always like that, right? He called it the art of the deal. And he would screw over hardworking people, contractors or whatever it might be. I mean, Trump is a, a greedy, you know, selfish. I mean, I, you know, I like Trump as a character in the show. At least I did. Now he's, you know, kind of jumped a shark. But all you Republicans thinking it's so much better with him, come on. He, $8 trillion. And so what happened was George W. Bush, George uh, uh, H. W. Bush, the senior Bush, and Dick Cheney and, them, and those guys, they looted the country. That's when they started taking the deficit up to the trillions. And they started looting the country. And that it continued under Obama, all them, right? Clinton and all that. And then it got really bad under Obama. And they, re and they realized that they could loot um, American debt. Like they could ring up debt, federal debt, and take money. And so that's what they did. And they all, you know... They all did that. And Republicans and Democrats are all scammers. And now it's they showed the template of how it can be done, right? You guys remember the first 
season of Survivor when they started forming one t- one side started to form alliances and they realized how you won the game and then pretty much every survivor after that was some sort of you know some sort of version of that right no one was trying to just you know there was these survivor things you were supposed to do but the game was about winning the money and there was manipulation and you know they went into big brother all these things once the game the the way you win the game is out there I mean, it happens in the NFL. It happens in the NBA. They discover some, uh, you know, better way of doing things. Then every team adopts it because it works, right? You can't compete against people who, I mean, it's, once people are starting to use steroids, you got to use steroids. You're not going to beat somebody using steroids. You're not going to be better than somebody who's using steroids. I mean, that's what happened with the Tour de France and in baseball and all these other things, right? Once people cheat, you can't beat them if, if by playing fair that's how it works and so they've rigged they know how to rig the game by taking deficit money your money money that you owe and your grandchildren are going to owe or whatever it is right federal debt and they just take the money right they you know it's like they charge a they're charging a credit card a, a federal credit card and they just take the money and you know it's worked for them and they're all going to do it that's why i said this you know current president the Whoever won, whether Trump or Biden, they were going to be in charge of the America going out of business sale because you can't recover from that much debt, that much federal debt, and then all the rest of it, right? We're completely insolvent. So all you Trumpers thinking he was, no, he sucked. He screwed you. Like, you know, he, he won your confidence. JoJo sucks, but Trump sucked just as bad, right? He might be, He might be more likable. He might say things that agree with your belief system more, but he isn't any better. And you're just being duped, right? You keep on getting duped, thinking that one side is different than the other side. You would think that Republicans really cared about reducing inflation. They'd vote for the Inflation Reduction Act. But every single Republican House has not voted against it. Every single Republican in the House and Senate. Boo! With the Business Roundtable and all the major chambers of commerce, it's not just just that I think that it's important that people get a shot. But look, the reason why, the reason why businesses should be hiring labor folks is simple. You, you know, they're the single greatest technicians in the world. They're the best laborers in the world. You build the best product in them. No, no, I'm not just joking. I'm not just saying that. <laughs> He's not just joking. <laughs> of course that's a joke. <laughs> it's of course that's a joke that you guys are good workers. Every other poor country out there and immigrants are outworking you. So that's not just a joke that you guys are the best because, you know, you guys are entitled. You grew up in America and you don't have the hunger to do the kind of labor that you get from sweatshops around the world. That's not just a joke. But people forget a lot of the trades. They forget. You go to four or five years of school, you're an apprenticeship. It's like going back to college. It's not like you all of a sudden just step, step in. You build a better product, it lasts longer, and it's cheaper for the business, and it's better for the country. Yeah, that's not true. Woo! Woo! And over here. Where is it written? Where is it written that says America can't lead the world in manufacturing? Where does it say that? Yeah, it doesn't say it anywhere. I don't even know. Like, exactly. You're You're so right. We've exported too damn much. In fact, next week I'm going... No, imported. We've imported too much. You've got the wrong thing. ...to Ohio for the groundbreaking of a multi-billion dollar semiconductor manufacturing plant. Woo! Let's look over here. Cost ...against creating good-paying jobs, against a fair tax system. Every single one in the House and Senate. Every one. And one thing more, when Franklin D. Roosevelt oh boy. signed the National Labor, Labor Relations Act when it passed in the 30s, he didn't say it was okay. How old were you then, Joe? He said in the flag that says we should encourage unions. Encourage. What? He's just a- encouraging unions. He just, he just like a mumbles and then he shouts. I guess the whole thing. A vision of a fairer, more decent America. 
one where everybody has a fair share, where every American is treated with, my dad would say, with dignity. The economy that works for work, not wealth. I want to make close with this. We're a serious moment in our nation history. And it's not high pro I mean it from the bottom of my heart. He does. He's just not joking. He keeps on saying that, right? But he's always has to say, I'm not joking. I'm not being facetious, right? <laughs> I'm not, you know, whatever it is, right? He has all these different ways of saying, no, I'm not lying this time. I'm actually, you know, because he's been a career liar. As I said last week, we remain in the battle for the soul of America. By the way, all right, God love you. Let him go. There's actually people go. out there. That's a shocker. Whoa. No, 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 no. Grab no, him, no. grab him, grab the crap out of him. Look at this. Look at this dude right here. Grab this guy and throw him the F out. She's a... <laughs> no, don't. Let, let him go. Let him. He's, look, everybody's entitled to be an idiot. Point him. Point right at his freaking face. <laughs> I didn't even see this before. This is great. Point right at his face. Point right out of his face. Being an idiot. You calling him an idiot? Let's uh, watch this woman come up. Boom. She's pointing. Look at them point. You. It's you. No, 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 no. Don't. Let, let him go. Let him. He's. Look. Everybody's. <laughs> you. You accuse. Entitled to be an idiot. No, He's no. entitled to be an idiot. Everybody's. Uh, Everyone's entitled to be an idiot. Boom. Point at him. Woo. Extreme MAGA Republicans don't just threaten our personal rights and our economic security. They embrace political violence. Woo. Political violence, like that woman out there. She's a, she's a pacifist. Look. No, look, the reason... I'm not talking all Republicans. I'm talking about these extreme MAGA Republicans. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. I'm not, I'm not joking. The definition of democracy is you accept the will of the people when the votes are honestly counted. Where's all these people? How do they get all these people there? These guys don't do it. It's the Milwaukee Labor Fest. Maybe they offered them free beers. Got their pink hats on. Name me a democracy in the world where a leader argues to engage in violence. To this day, MAGA Republicans in Congress defend the mob that stormed the Capitol, and people died later. Senator Johnson said it was, a, by and large, a peaceful protest. Woo. Here's the end. ...more determined and more committed to saving American democracy than the MAGA Republicans and that guy Woo. off the door are destroying democracy. Exactly. Woo. Democracy is at stake. Democracy is at stake. You got to remember who we are. Who are we? We're the United States of America. We're the, that's who we are. There's nothing, nothing we can't do if we do it together. God bless you all, and may God prick our troops. May Thank God prick our troops. Exactly. I hope God pricks our troops. That's what I get here. Who we are. We're the United States of America. There's nothing, nothing we can't do if we do it together. God bless you all, and may God prick our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. I hope God pricks, pricks our troops again. Says if God is going to protect our troops, who's going to protect our troops? Who protect our troops? Um, he said, <laughs> what marble mouth of an effer. All right, so I took some of the highlights of his, again, you know, what I showed you. So I watched, it's a 30-something minute speech, and I watched about 10 minutes, so a third. And these are the highlights of that third. <laughs> I mean, these are enough gaffes for a whole term, like, you know, four years. He's given it in this Milwaukee job fest, right, labor fest. But I'm coming back and getting it. Think about it. Think about how it would rip your heart out. It's wrong. It's simply wrong. I know corporations. I come from the corporate state of the world. 
More corporations are incorporated in Delaware than every other nation, every other state in the country combined. They pay more taxes than any one of you, less fewer taxes than any one of you pay. It's not right. No, no, it, I mean, this is, it, I, it, it's just outrageous. Well, guess what? Guess what? I wasn't able to take care anyway. They, the last guy left me with a giant deficit. You know how much I'm going to do with the deficit this year? One trillion five hundred thousand reduction in the deficit. The reason why businesses should be hiring labor folks is simple. You, you have the single greatest technicians in the world. You're the best laborers in the world. You build the best product in the world. No, no, I'm not just joking. I'm not just saying. Where is it written? Where is it written that says America can't lead the world in manufacturing? Where does it say that? We've exported too damn much. As I said last week, we remain in the battle for the soul of America. By the way, all right, God love you. Let him go. No, 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 you, Jacuse. Title of being an idiot. Okay, look. Woo. Extreme MAGA Republicans don't just threaten our personal rights and our economic security, they embrace political violence. You got to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. There's nothing, nothing we can't do if we do it together. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. So what's hilarious about that is then I um, I think I did this first, and then I went to eat breakfast, and I turned on Morning Joe, which is, I was going through the channels. <laughs> I didn't turn on Morning Joe. And they said they had this thing coming up, so I went upstairs, and I um, taped it with my YouTube TV. And they're talking about some other guy, I think the same guy Trump was talking about, um, Biden was talking about here, as being an embarrassment. So watch this. And coming up, ahead of the midterms, President Biden has been skipping the big rallies and focusing instead. Wait, did she say skipping the big rallies? <laughs> like he skipped the big rallies because of COVID, you know, not because nobody wanted to see him, right? because he's, there's no enthusiasm behind him even less now. This is what Mika meant when she said that um, it's her job or it's their job to tell people what to think. The dangerous you know, edges here are that he's trying to undermine the media, trying to make up his own facts. And it could be that while unemployment and uh, the, the economy worsens, he could have undermined the messaging so much that he can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that if, is the that is our you... job on fundraising. Mike Allen of Axios joins us ahead with more on that. Plus the debate stage last night. Wow. Republican Senator Ron Johnson claimed the FBI set him up. <laughs> well, sh well, that's exactly what the audience did. Yeah, 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 this is amazing. Ron Johnson goes full Marion Barry. Yeah. I mean, I come on. Let's go in there. I yeah. Just um, go on. Well, the audience was with you because there was a lot of laughing at him, not with him. So like I said, I either had done the initial, um, the initial part of the video that you've already seen or I had started it. At least I knew what JoJo's gaffes were. And so right after that, I went to eat breakfast and I saw this. And I'm like, yeah, they're just so ridiculous, right? To talk about laughing at somebody. I'm not saying this guy, Ron Johnson, I don't know anything about him. You know, I don't, all these, all these uh, politicians are jokes. But JoJo Magoo is the worst one. He's an embarrassment. And so let's see what their report said here. The FBI set me up with a corrupt with a corrupt briefing and then leak that to smear me. I am no, I right, mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I, I mean, all right. He is referring to corruption with the FBI, which I've been trying to uncover and expose. All right. So do we have time for please, audience, please. We're trying to get through these. Audience, please, please, please stop don't laugh at a in, sitting United States Senator disbelief. who is making a fool of himself. Oh my God. We, so, 
this is what's mind-bogglingly inhuman, mind-bogglingly <laughs> inhuman about the media. And even though we all know it, we see it all the time, it's just so inhuman. It's just so deceptive. It's shameless. It's people with no shame, like no sense of uh, ability to self-perceive. Because Jojo Magoo has been a joke his entire political career. Jojo Magoo is a political hack, a liar, a plagiarist, a father of a crackhead son who's impregnated a stripper named Dallas from Arkansas. <laughs> I mean, all the things, right? I mean, he's a joke. And a lot of these Republicans, or all of them, are, you know, a joke as well. That guy, Ron Johnson, looks like a real dope. I'm not defending that guy. I'm not, you know, saying he's you know, great or whatever it is, or he's right in terms of what he's saying. Of course, now, I mean, the FBI, it's not unthinkable that the FBI would do something like that because we already know that they were working actively against Trump. And I'm not talking about that like a Republican would. And you Republicans, you Republicans got to realize that Fox News is the ones that did this. Rupert Mur got Murdoch and uh, was Roger Ailes were evil dudes that they created media that would just ignore anything that didn't agree with their heavy-handed partisan view. And the Republicans used to be much eviler than the Democrats. And this is a recent switch. And they had more power and control. And they were forcing the war and they were forcing all kinds of abusive, uh, you know, and the whole military industrial complex and all these things. And so Roger Ailes and, 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 uh, and Rupert Murdoch fed the right wing dopes. And there's lots of them, lots of right wing dopes. And MSNBC and CNN were getting killed by them. They couldn't understand it. Right. And so now they followed that same template or model and they do stuff like this. Because everyone can see Jojo Magoo is drooling on himself. Like he's a, he's a nightmare, right? There's no way this guy should be president. There's no way this guy should have, He needs to be retired. He's not capable of holding a job. He doesn't have it in him, right? He's not able to competently do his work. And besides that, he's a bad guy, bad character, creepy, weird, you know, dysfunctional, a messed up individual, right? And... You know, Ron Johnson looks like a real dope, right? I don't know anything about him, but I just from that little bit, yeah, he's a dope. Not that the FBI is some pure organization, but he's a real dope. He looks like a dope, acts like a dope, and he's a dope. And all these politicians are corrupt. But you can't call this guy a dope and an embarrassment and say people are laughing at him when you're ignoring Jojo Magoo, right? I mean, that's just like the, the level of be, not being a, a human being being such a lying piece of crap, right? I mean, it's the same for the Republicans who, you know, want to say Trump is great and ignore all the stuff about Trump, right? Because, you know, Trump was a part of the, the whole beastly thing, right? He wasn't above any of this stuff, right? Selfish. I mean, he racked up eight, $8 trillion worth of national debt himself. And these guys, Jared Kushner, all his family went to the bank, right? And so we all know that. I mean, we should all know that. And so there's no redeeming media. There's no redeeming politician here. I mean, the whole thing is just an embarrassment. We're an embarrassment as a species, and these people are leading the way. But I'm coming back and getting it. Who is making a fool of himself. Oh, my God. We so Think about it. Think about how it would rip your heart out. It's wrong. It's simply wrong. Oh, my God. We so I know corporations. I come from the corporate state of the world. More corporations are incorporated in Delaware than every other nation, every other state in the country combined. They pay more taxes than any one of you, less fewer taxes than any one of you pay. It's not right. No, no, it, I mean, this is, it, I, it, it's just outrageous. Well, guess what? Guess what? I wasn't able to take care anyway. Oh, my God. We, so they, the last guy left me with a giant deficit. So oh, my God. We, so you know how much I'm going to do with the deficit this year? One trillion five hundred thousand reduction in the deficit. Oh, so, my God. So the reason why businesses should be hiring labor folks is simple. You, you know, you're the single greatest technicians in the world. You're the best laborers in the world. You build the best product in the world. No, no, I'm not just joking. I'm not just saying this. Oh, so, my God. So Where is it written? 
Where is it written that says America can't lead the world in manufacturing? Where does it say that? Oh, my God. We said, we've exported too damn much. Oh, so, my God. We said, as I said last week, we remain in the battle for the soul of America. By the way, all right, God love you. Let him go. No, 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 don't let, let him go. Let him. He's, look, everybody's. <laughs> you, Jacques. Title of being an idiot. Okay, look. Woo. Extreme MAGA Republicans don't just threaten our personal rights and our economic security, they embrace political violence. Oh, so, my God. We, so, you got to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. There's nothing, nothing we can't do if we do it together. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Oh, so, my God. We, so we've gone Michael Steele. <laughs> this is bad. Ed Luce just helpfully a sent me a freak. text, and he said, oh. we've gone from the full Monty to the full Mary. Of course. Where Drop Ron, the mic. Right. Ron Johnson <laughs> goes, full Mary and Barry. Yeah. The FBI set me up. The FBI set me up. I, 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 you know, I don't know. It's just, there's no shame. There's no anything. It, they just throw this crap out there, and they yeah. just say the wildest stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and you look at them, and you go, okay, so when did they have time to do that? What 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 purpose would oh. they have to oh, do that? Yeah. Are, are you really that valuable he, that they're going to— He's trying to cover up. It reminds me up. during Abscam. I don't know if you remember that scandal, but during Abscam, you had a member of Congress who was shoving so much yeah. money into his pocket. He could. He just. He, he couldn't, couldn't close his he jacket. Couldn't close it. He had too much cash. <laughs> Mike and, Allen is here. Mike Allen's here. And, and when they asked him what he was doing, he's, he was saying he was conducting his own investigation. Your senile gaff magnet president has a son who was a crackhead. As so it's a, such a successful crackhead, he got paid millions upon millions of dollars for not showing up at his job for companies in the Ukraine and. In China and other places. He literally was working jobs and smoking crack, right? He was getting paid to smoke crack. And the only explanation was he was selling access to his dad, right? <laughs> now, so none of this other stuff is as bad as that. And you guys are just sitting on your hands <laughs> going after this guy, Ron Johnson, when the president of the United States is a corrupt nightmare and his son is a crackhead. His son, son is a crackhead who has taken, uh, you know, millions of dollars selling access to his dad. Fun corruption. Right. He was going to go and check the serial numbers on those all those bills. Right. Oh, and and uh, what about all the money in the freezer? You were here for that. Oh, oh yeah. Jefferson, oh, freezer. Yeah. Exactly. It's, all right. Oof. Will I take us through the debate? So look at this couple, right? Mika, <laughs> this dude, Mika. And Gumby Joe, the guy with the Gumby hairdo, is mocking people. And Jojo Magoo was in Wisconsin, and Ron Johnson and this guy were debating in Wisconsin, right? And so this is, um, you know, like how, how can you ignore all those gaffes by the sitting president? He does this at every speech. He's mentally incompetent, and you guys are covering it up in a shameless way. Not that the right is better, not that Fox News is better. But do you guys suck? And like, you know, they're mocking and laughing at Ron Johnson when they're a complete embarrassment. So this is from earlier in the week. Soldiers of campaign learned to scale rock, ski and survive, preparing for the war they were about to fight. He's talking to some part of the armed forces here. The pivotal moment came, as the senator pointed out, in February 1945. Surprise Allied attack in the mountains in Italy. Imagine. It's pitch black, punishing cold, the mission high in the mountains that hinged on the skill, strength, and stamina that could have only been gained in a place like this. They're more than ready. They were more than ready that day and since then. American soldiers in the 10th Mountain Division scaled that 1,800-foot cliff at night, caught the Germans by surprise, captured, 
captured key positions and broke through the German defense line at a pivotal point in the war. Just imagine, I mean it sincerely, I say this as a father of a man who won the Broad Star, the Conspicuous Service Medal, and lost his life in Iraq. Imagine the courage. Yeah, that didn't happen. Okay, his son died of a brain tumor. We'll show you that in a second. The daring and the genuine sacrifice, genuine sacrifice they all made. He died of brain cancer. Okay, so maybe he got something over there, um, but he died of brain cancer. The oldest child of U.S. President Joe Biden and Neela Hunter Biden, she died too. He served as the 44th Attorney General of Delaware and Army National Guard in Iraq War. He died of brain cancer in 2015 at the age of 46. So um, there he is with Joe. There they are getting a photo op, right? And all these things. Bo Biden was going to be a politician. He was the guy. Here they are crying here. The heartbreaking death of Bo Biden. There he is fake crying because he's a... There he is there. There he is this... You know, whatever it is. Remember, here he is at the funeral. Jojo Magoo. And so that is... There's Barack Obama giving him some smooches so he can feel better comforting him. You know? So he's left with his other son, Hunter, right? The screw-up. The addict, the greatest guy, the greatest president's son ever. You know, he would be careful. Joe Biden would be careful not to say uh, much derogatory at all about Hunter because Hunter actually holds the key to his father's prison cell. (laughs) His father's prison cell. Hunter, he's going to rat out Jojo Magoo. Trying to break him, may cut a deal, right? Just give him some crack, you know. And a stripper named Houston from Alabama, right? <laughs> and he's good to go. CB, CNBC, Jim Cramer blasts clowns who bought stocks ahead of a inflation report. I, I don't even know what. I, how do you even begin to trade this in the equity market? This is this one alien M and Upper here. You just want to be in cash at this point. Forget what about clowns it? thought this was going to be cool? I mean, it's wages, food, and housing. We've made no progress whatsoever. So those who are buying stocks and don't realize that the futures are going to take all the stocks down are, are just beyond my ken. I don't know what they're doing. And the people who bought stocks based on Britain, they're even more stupid than the people who bought stocks betting on the CPI being uh, cool. I, honestly, I, I just don't know what to say, how people could be so wrong. But Jim, how did these okay, were going to be hot we always, talk about, we always talk about timing the market, and I. Come on, Jim. She looks look sad, bro. We say the problem with timing the market is you got to be right twice. You got to know to get out, and then you got to know when to get back in. So let's say yeah, you well, want to get out on this. I mean, look, I think the Fed funds rate. I, look, I think the 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 two year goes to five, maybe five and a quarter. That's going to cause some pain. There'll be some blow ups. There'll be a lot of people come on TV and say it's Armageddon, and then you get a good chance to buy a lot of stuff, but. Don't do it yet. I mean, don't do it until you see something, some progress in wages or food or housing. I mean, these are the stuff Have that we all see that every day. I don't, I don't even all think day. we're on the trajectory for that progress. Not yet. No. I mean, uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Don't do it yet. I mean, we haven't broken the price of the housers. The ha- we don't break the houses. I'm not even way. <laughs> He's the, the male New York Stock Exchange version of the Kardashians. So, you know, our economy's screwed. Heron and Megan contradict their Netflix stories in his tell-all Netflix docu-series. Sources said Netflix and the series filmmakers were confused by some of the comments that Harry makes in his upcoming book, being at odds with what he he and his wife said on camera. And so, um, you know, that's problems. That's problematic. They can't keep their story straight. Dahmer, co-creator, denies show is sympathetic to serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. Well, it has to be a little bit uh, sympathetic because they always are. They often make serial killers the heroes now. Britney Spears deletes Instagool days after blasting estranged parents. Well, that's what happens, right? She's, you know, that's how you know she's 
least know she's a little bit crazy because she posted a bunch of stuff. And then she deleted her Instagram again. She deletes it all the time. She writes stuff. And it seems like she's, you know, whatever she's doing. And she deletes her Instagram and everybody says she's still not free. Somebody free Britney. Kim Kardashian exhausted by Kanye West social media attacks. I can't take it. I can't take it. It's exhausting. Like it's so exhausting. OMG, today I'm just exhausted. Um, I can't take it anymore, but I don't want to go back and forth on the internet. <laughs> um, the thing about it is, you know, people are so concerned about how other people view them. And she's like this superficial, narcissistic, egotistical dummy, right? And... I mean, how could you have a high opinion of her? She wants to be known as a nice person, somebody who cares about people? Come on, right? Like, they just are obsessed with their superficial appearances. They're, you know, all of it. They've cut their bodies up and stuffed plastic in them, and they're just, uh, you know, dumbing down America, making profit off of their crappy merch and all the stuff that they do. And so why are you trying to be a nice person? Why do you think is important? that people know you as a nice person, right? Like all these celebrities and politicians, I mean, people in general on social media, like, are you a nice person? I mean, everybody, like everyone who's listening to this, are you a good person? Are you a nice person? Like, are your thoughts nice thoughts? Do you have nice thoughts about other people? Or is it just some act, right? Like, that's what I've been saying for years. Like, I'm not a nice person. (laughs) Like, I can be nice, but I don't, you know. I don't wish well upon all these people. I don't wish ill either. I don't care, right? It's not, you know, but I'm not. uh, You you just stop faking it, right? Stop pretending that you don't have thoughts that are contrary to the way that you want people to think think about you, right? You know what you're thinking. This is what's great about meditating, that you, you know, confront the thoughts that you have and you're conscious of it, right? Like you, you realize, oh, wow, that was a mean thought, right? Like I say things all the time that are mean here because I think them, right? I have those thoughts and, you know, I'm mocking people, making fun of them. And I think it's, you know, could be a lot worse or whatever in terms of like, I just, there's no hate in my, I don't hate them. I'm not, you know, I don't feel hate. I don't feel anger, but just the stupidity and the dishonesty and just the ickiness that people present every day. And, you know, I don't like it, right? You know, it's, it's like, it's oppressive to, it's just, you know, just to, to get in contact with it, to see the way people are, just the fakeness, the superficial fakeness. Idris Alba and Jason Momoa have two words for their trolls on Twitter. What are those two words? I didn't see it here. Um, oh. No one should feel anything in their ovaries for him. Uh, f- you. <laughs> there he is. There's this guy. I hope that fat George Clooney is selling loads of tequila right now i am <laughs> oh you got it whoa that was a good one idris elba is ugly there i said it F- you boom so what a comeback they delivered like you know the timing and the, the brilliance of it alex jones unlikely to escape historically high defamation award legal experts say you mean the billion dollars? It's historical because it's a joke, right? There has to be, you know, Alex Jones is the worst for the truth community. If you don't realize that by now, he gives them everything that they want in terms of profiling anybody who has a different opinion than the mainstream narrative. They want to make people crazy. They want to call you crazy conspiracy theorists. Anybody. It's like 60% of the people believe in some sort of alternative uh they don't believe in the mainstream narrative and the the government things like this right 60 percent, maybe even more because that includes the wake the woke people that includes the includes the cubies all the sort of extremist people right it includes all those people all those different groups but most people you know are aware that the government lies and that's probably like 80 percent 
and that you know politicians and the news media lie and everything's kind of a lie, right? It's just to just to degrees of the deception. But they have Alex Jones who gives them everything so they can conduct this profile and you know fill the the airways with their anti-truther rhetoric or whatever it is, right? Their hate speech towards truthers. You have been watching a judge read out what is ultimately a staggering amount of money that Alex Jones is now being ordered to pay to families of... A staggering amount of money, right? She's saying that because it's ridiculous. Again, you know, nobody with any sort of common sense or a sense of fair play would say words that were said. Again, Alex Jones, is he's, he's in on it. He's a CIA shell, all this stuff, whatever he is, right? And so it's not real. <laughs> but, I mean, if you're watching this in a movie... You would say, like, that's um, over the top, right? That's too much. That the award is too big. And I gave comparison yesterday to other types of awards, and that includes death, killing somebody, right? Alex Jones has to pay uh, many times more than people who have been, uh, have been, have lost judgments of a wrongful death suit. And so their feelings are valued more than a human life. Right, the feelings of these people that won this money are, are valued more. Their emotions are valued more than the human life. Right, the lo the loss of their children isn't as much worth as much as their feelings being hurt. And I'm going to come back to this at the end. I want to talk about the truth community in a different way than I ever have before. I just want to get through this and Nancy Pelosi and a few other things, and I'll come back to this in the narrative. Sandy Hook school shooting victims for the lies that Jones perpetrated, for the conspiracy theories that he put forward claiming Sandy Hook was a hoax. It obviously was not. Nearly two dozen people killed, murdered on that horrific day in Newtown, Connecticut. This trial, of course, taking place in Connecticut with the damages totaling roughly a billion dollars. So calling bullshit on something, right, and being wrong or right doesn't matter. I mean, of course, they're saying he's wrong here. But calling BS on something is now worth a billion dollars. <laughs> you know, think about all the people who have said that's BS about something. The government, the media, their friends and family. Oh, that's BS. Oh, you're lying, right? That's not true. Oh, you're making that up. That's now worth a billion dollars, right? <laughs> or $120 million per family or whatever it is, right? Because the emotional damage from calling BS on something is far worse than losing your kids. Like I said yesterday, having lost a daughter a daughter to suicide, but also lost relationships, right? We've all lost loved ones in one way or another, relationships strained with family members, right? And people talking about that will never be as bad as the pain of losing whatever, like a loved one or something, right? The pain of the loss you know, someone can say the meanest thing to me, and it isn't going to even register compared to the suckiness of losing a child or whatever it might be. I mean, that's, you know, that should be for everybody. The loss of their children should be their greatest pain, not somebody saying BS. I mean, if they're harassed, you know, there's harassment, you know, that is whatever it is. You know, harassment is, you know, I mean, there's some monetary value for it, sure. A billion dollars, right? $120 million per family. It's excessive. Anybody could see that. Like, it doesn't make sense. Uh, again, it is an extraordinary amount of money here. We've got Ben Collins, Danny Savalos, our legal analyst, Paul Butler, our legal analyst as well, joining us. Ben, let me go to you for uh, initial reaction here. I know that almost simultaneously, we are also hearing from... Alex Jones on InfoWars learning, I think in real time, that he owes about $965 million plus attorney fees to these families. That's correct. Uh, look, Hallie, my jaw is on the floor here. I, I, this is an amount of money that he cannot make up. Um, and he knows that, and that's what he's saying right now. He's obviously telling people to go buy some supplements or whatever, but this is, there are no amount of supplements that are going to make up that level of money. Uh, his team counted over a billion dollars. We're still like, that's how high this, the damages are here. Nobody has a real number yet. We're still trying to figure that out. Um, I do want to read you a quote from him. Um, he said, first of all, he said, we've lost count. It's in the billions. And he says, uh, why not make it trillions? Because he doesn't have any of this. And he said, this must be what hell's like. 
they just read out the damages, even though you don't got the money. And that's what he's going through right now, Alex Jones. He also said he's not going to stop. He said they want to scare us away from questioning Uvalde or Parkland. We're not going away. We're not going to stop. Um, so this is not a deterrent for him. He's just going to keep going. But at this point, I, you know, I don't know how Infor is going to keep going. He's yeah. hoping that there's a cap on these damages, but I just don't know. Okay, so I'm going to comment at the end of the video about this. So back in January of 2020, Nancy Pelosi was threatening the once great president. <laughs> They have dissuaded him from coming to Capitol Hill. They told him they don't have the resources to protect him here. So at the moment, he is not coming, but that could change. change. I would come to him and punch him out. And so I'm, I'm, I would pay I'm for waiting for this, for trespassing on the Capitol grounds. I'm going to punch him out, and I'm going to go to jail, and I'm going to be happy. She's going to punch him out. He's going to go to jail. He's going to be happy. She just threatened the president. She just threatened the sitting president, right, on camera. And regardless of her reasoning, regardless of how justified you might think she is, she just threatened the president, right? The sitting president. And, you know, she's Fire Marshal Schill, unless she has some sort of witch powers. I mean, her punches can't possibly hurt, right? <laughs> she probably, I mean, she's Fire Marshal Schill. All right, so I want to say this. The truth community, as most people conceive of it, especially right-wing people, people who are newbies to it, is a joke. It's not what you think it is, right? And what happened with Alex Jones and, you know, all these types of things that have happened where there's, you know, you think that there's an organic movement, but it always ends up going the opposite way. And you get lured into the movement like the QBs did, and then it's used against you. So I want to develop that. So some dopey person wrote me on Instagram or something and sent me um, some of these, you know, parents and some of the and some of the evidence against them that's supposed to prove it's a hoax. And I knew about this years ago, like before you were even, <laughs> you know, in terms of you were like it wasn't you weren't even awake. Like I, I was there during that whole thing. I participated for a little bit, and then I could smell a rat especially when they started to uh, censor people for criticizing the pig kid, right? The, uh, you know, who I'm talking about. And there was a video that was floating around that had been doctored, and it was shared by a bunch of people, including me, and they gave everybody community guideline strikes. And I realized when I looked at the video, um, it, was, it had been doctored, right? That it was something that some right wing QB, you know, future QB type person had hoaxed and they were using that to uh, censor people and it had been passed around. And even before that, there, you know, there was just um, something off about the whole coverage of these events. There's a bunch of these events that happened and I never felt very comfortable about covering the events because to people who were normies, you look like a complete jerk. We're going after people who had just lost their children or something like it. And so that was a problem. You know, within the truth community itself, it was okay. But this, you know, any of these videos or anything that you were saying, if it went in front of any other population or demographic, you look like a horrible person, right? And I just, you know, I knew it was a bad thing because you had to be 100% right. Otherwise, if there was some truth to what happened or, you know, you were given disinformation or you were being set up, which is, you know, what ultimately happened here with Jones. And, you know, he was set up when he's a part of it. So who is who are they setting up? If Jones is a part of it, then who are they setting up and who are they trying to reach with this, you know, this thing that happened? Right. So I could tell that this thing was going to go wasn't going to go my way or our way, you know. And so I stopped covering it. It made me feel a sense of relief because I always felt unsettled about it. There was something, you know, it was just, um, you know, people were showing up at these families' houses and harassing them. It was getting out of hand. Confronting people and trolling people doesn't work, right? And this whole info wars, that there's an information war, you know, that's a joke. That was never true. You know, people 
we're all going to go the way that they're going to go. There's very few people, few people who can change. And even in the so-called truth community, there are so many different levels of people that it's not a real community. Just like with every demographic, you can band together to fight a common enemy, but when the enemy's gone, you don't get along with the other groups or other people in your group, right? And so, you know, it's not a real community. People in the truth community are very belligerent. They don't get along. We don't work well with others. You know, we have a certain personality type. Most of us aren't joiners. Most of us aren't, you know, people persons, right? A lot of us are introverted or, you know, antisocial. And so, you know, we don't work well together. Like there was, there was all these wars between truthers, truthers getting into it, truthers, um, you know, hammering each other. I mean, there's been stuff like this. Uh, the conflict has often turned in, in on itself, right? Even with like the flat earthers and the cubies, they turned on each other, right? Even smaller subgroups. Most people in the truth community are angry and have, you know, adversarial personalities, hostile, you know, some part of it, you know, not, not all of it, right? But have some, you know, some fighter in us, right? Whatever it is, right? <laughs> you know, and so some negativity. I mean, there's, uh, most of us have been damaged by the, the deviant system, right? Not fitting in and whatever, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the things that go into us uh, being against the system or open to these alternative narratives and willing to leave the group behind and which is, you know, honorable and noble, but, you know, doesn't make for a good cohesive type of group, right? Where people can get along and work together cooperatively. But anyways, you take away this idea of an information war that you're trying to wake everyone up, which we should all know it doesn't happen. If you haven't had an experience where you talk to somebody where you think you have a slam dunk and they look at you like you're talking a foreign language and they actually look at you like you're crazy or they don't want any part of you or they get into an argument with you, family members, friends, whatever. If you haven't lost people because of your beliefs in the truth community, you haven't argued with people on the internet, then, you know, I mean, <laughs> if you've been talking to people who aren't awake, so to speak, and if every one of those people you've talked to are going, oh my God, you're right, I can't believe I didn't see this, and they wake up to what you're saying, then you live a charmed existence, because everybody else is has an experience of people, the majority of people don't want to go there, they don't want to believe what you believe. And then you have friends who are, or people in the truth community who, you know, there's differences on how far you're going to go or how, you know, crazy you're going to get or, you know, whatever, in terms of your beliefs. And so waking people up is, you know, completely played out. I've talked about this so much. It isn't going to work. It's not a solution. This idea that enough people would get the information and once they got the information, they would change their ways and their views and they would vote differently and they would change everything. That's not true. We all can see that now, right? Not true. Not going to happen. Right? <laughs> Was never going to happen. And so that's not a solution. And so what are the other solutions? Right? And Alex Jones never believed in himself. Obviously, he's a shill. But he was going out with his blowhorn, you know, his, his megaphone and going out and yelling at people. That doesn't win people over. We know now that arguing with people and telling them they're wrong and calling them names doesn't create change in the in the other people. We 100% know that, right? We should all know that. So how else are we going to change things, right? We can't use the political system. So I've said this a number of times. The truth community doesn't really exist for the very simple reason. Now, we can all believe that we're being lied to, which is true. And we could say that there's conspiracies or whatever there is, which is also true. And the people running the system, you know, the, the money power and the system's collapsing, you know, we're on the verge of collapse. All those things are true, right? But what we have to also admit, and almost no one in the truth community admits this, is that it's the whole system, even the things that we like. You know, I've said this so much, that we like things in this evil empire, and we need things in this evil empire. And we're accustomed to entitlements and, and privileges and lifestyle and whatever else, dependent on it, addicted to it. 
and it's evil. It's all part of the same evil system. And, you know, the truth community, the real slimy, low-level, you know, Alex Jones-type people like to convince you that there's a good guys and bad guys, and you're a part of the good guys, and that somehow if we get rid of the bad guys, you can still have all the things you love about America, even though America is hurting other people. Our lifestyle is predicated on other people suffering because we're eating their food, we're taking their resources, we're a part of an evil empire, which we are supporting. And your lifestyle would not exist if it wasn't for the powers that be, the CIA that everyone hates, and the FBI, and the, you know, the NSA, and the government, and the, the bankers, and all these people rigging the system in your favor so you have the lifestyle and privileges that you enjoy, that we all enjoy. Without them rigging it in your favor, you know, there's a great scene, I've showed the clip before, I'm not going to do it here, from Margin Call, the movie Margin Call, where the guy says, you know, if I take my hand off the, the scale, things get re- real, real effing fast, right? You know, if I, I'm tipping the scale, you know, this guy who's a financial guy, right? We're tipping the scale in the favor of the people, you know, the American people. And you take the hand off the scale and everyone's like, whoa, 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 what happened to our privileges? And so without the system, without the evil system, you don't have the lifestyle you enjoy. I don't have the lifestyle that I enjoy. And so, you know, I'm I'm less critical. I'm certainly not angry or hateful at the people who are providing that for me, right? Even though I know it's evil, even though I know the system, you know, needs to collapse. It's, you know, it's going against God's will. I'm not like, oh my God, I'm so much above you guys because I'm a part of it. We're all a part of it, right? We're all sucking off the teat of this evil empire. I've accepted that at some point this system has to collapse and if it's sooner than later and I have to suffer, that's, you know, so be it. I realize the justice in that, but I'm not looking forward to it on a material level. On a spiritual level, sure. The system is about depravity. And, you know, we're not as depraved as the the people who run the system. We're not as depraved as the Jeffrey Epsteins and the Joe Bidens and the Donald Trumps and the people above them, the royal family and the, you know, the ultra wealthy people, the so-called elite, right? We're not as bad as them. But without them, we don't have a system. We don't have a lifestyle. And we might hate them. We might think they're, you know, and I don't because I know this, right? You might want to hate them and look at how evil they are. But they're the ones who are providing for you, the lifestyle that you enjoy. And you can't have that without the system, the evil system. And people are suffering so you could have that. There are people all around the world that are impoverished, that their resources are being stolen for them and, you know, made into crap and showing up at our Walmarts and our Costcos and all this other stuff. And so the truth community doesn't exist because the majority of truthers don't want to admit that. And I don't care if you do or not. It's not my problem. But just recognize that you're on a pathway. And at some point, you're going to get to where I am, right? Like if you're not there already, you're going to realize that you're a part of the problem just like I am because we're all feeding into the system. We're all, you know, dependent on the beast, right? And you can extricate yourself if you're a younger person, gain some skills, build a community, be able to live off the grid. I don't know. Maybe you could do that. Sure. I'm not saying do that, but I'm saying, you know, maybe you could. But most of us can't. We're too old, you know, we're too weak, we're too whatever. And the system, you know, I mean, it's tough to break free from it. But you can't fix it. It was never something that, you know, it's not broken. This is, The system does what it's supposed to do. It's an unfair system that allows some people to be wealthier than others. And because we live in America, we're on the, you know, the upper side of things. You go around the globe, you see how impoverished people are, you see how they suffer, you see how they're malnourished, you see how they're underdeveloped, you see how they're, you know, they just don't have as much as we have in terms of everything, right? Because we have their material resources and we're complaining all the time, right? A lot of these people are much nicer than us too. <laughs> we're complainers, you know, oh my God, right? And so, um, you know... <laughs> There's no such thing as the truth community, right? And Santa Claus doesn't exist either. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramato, definitely important for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day. 
and be grateful.